What's up everyone, Jacob here. Today I've got the Roland Phantom 8. I've heard some people lovingly call this keyboard the baby phantom, but by no means is it baby by the way that word means. It inherits a lot of really awesome features and workflow and high quality sounds from the top range of the phantom models. So when you get this keyboard, you know that you've got Roland's best at your fingertips. Now, if you know anything about the Phantom models at all, you'll know that they're, they're beasts. There's a lot going on. They can do a lot. Of course, they have really wonderful sounds. The grand piano sounds, of course, is something that always attracts me to a keyboard first before I even get into the buttons and knobs. And I mean, I mean, really expressive, really nice, and also the key bed feels good. 88 keys, there are three different keyed versions, number of keys that you can get of this particular model, but the 88 key version is nice. It's a really significant, you know, substantial weighted feel, um, and something just as a piano player, again, that's how I always judge an instrument first. It feels nice, it feels natural to me. Now, moving on to the controls, the screen, this awesome screen you got here, faders, you got pads, you got buttons and encoders. Let me quickly give you the deal about that and what this keyboard really brings to the table. So some of you guys may have been sequencing for a long time. I'm actually just old enough to have some keyboards that had floppy disks and had to deal with that and the headache and kind of pseudo nightmare of some of that older technology. And it used to be a lot harder, truthfully to use MIDI when it was in its infancy and there weren't computers and there weren't DAWs yet. Um, so, you know, you were dealing with a lot more onboard keyboard type sequencing and you were using that kind of tech. Well, this keyboard is awesome because it sort of bridged the gap in a way between then and now how technology has changed. So if you look into the sequencer on this keyboard, which is one of its main features, It'll look a lot like what you might see in an Ableton Live or another DAW. There's a timeline, arrangement, kind of piano roll looking view. There are clips, there are rows of MIDI clips, we'll say that you can trigger. And you can organize things in clips and then you can group those clips together and then you can arrange that into a song. And so you're basically, you can go all the way down to the micro and then out to macro to build an entire song. And it does, to me, as somebody that's used Ableton enough to know, it feels very much like having a DAW built into your keyboard. And the greatest thing about it is it can integrate with all the modern DAWs as well. So if you do use Ableton or Studio One or Logic, you can control the DAW from the keyboard as well. You can use the pads over here to be DAW control, and there's already that function built in. But you could also, you have these eight faders here. You can switch back and forth from zone one through eight, nine through 16. You have 16 tracks that could all be different instruments. And you can actually have that synced with channels in your DAW. So as you are changing faders, you see here the levels are going up and down. You will see that mimicked in your DAW. So you could have built an entire song in here, have different tracks, different instruments, and then you can put it straight into a DAW. So you're not limited. You don't have to just work in here. You don't have to just work on a computer. Or you don't have to do what a lot of people have to do, which is you write something great in here and then you gotta figure out how to get it all on a thumb drive and drop in all the audio files into a DAW and re-sync a tempo and all. No, it's built to make that workflow very easy. And before I get into all the stuff that you're seeing here, the left side of the piano, of course, is where you have your pitch bend. And let me go to a synth sound here. And the way this works, you have pitch up, pitch down, and then forward is your vibrato.
and it has that fluid design where you can go back and forth pretty interchangeably. This is the range of motion that you get. <laughs> That's pretty trippy. And then you have these two wheels up here as well. And this one's set to be a pitch bend, and this one is also set for modulation. But of course, you can make them whatever you want. You could make that map map it to cutoff for a synth, or you could have it for some other parameter that you choose, something that you want it to control. And then you have these two buttons here, S1 and S2. And those, of course, are already pre-mapped, but like the wheels, you can make them what you want. One thing about these two buttons, for instance, is there are actually some string patches in here that are already pre-mapped to have these be articulation changes. So, for instance, you could say this one was going to be staccato, but then this might change you to pits. So you could possibly have a legato patch and then have these two buttons that are changing you between articulations. This would be similar to if you're used to a DAW and used to uh, virtual string plugins, that would be maybe like having a key switch where you're using some of the lower keys to switch articulations. Well, it could be really nice to have dedicated buttons for that so you can perform that sound with those articulations live. Okay, so I've got distracted enough with all the other awesome features, but let's get into that sequencer. So again, I'm in zone view right now, but I want to go select. I want to make sure I've got the scene that I want, which is scene 42, heaven. Now I can go back to zone view if I'd like. I can see all my instruments. I've got them picked. I picked all my sounds. I've tweaked them. I've made them sound exactly like I want. Now when I go to pattern in the sequencer, because this scene is built in, I've already got some clips here. All of these are different MIDI clips, different you know, performances, you'll say, of different instruments that I can launch individually. And stop here. So that's a bass line that's already built in. But again, like I was saying, similar to an Ableton, you've got a row here of these letters, and that will launch an entire row, kind of like launching a scene, right? So if I click A, master stop there. So you can already see that workflow is probably kind of familiar to you. Now, obviously I could go in and tweak individual ones. I could write over them. I could start fresh with these instruments and write a completely different song depending on what I'm doing. So now I want to go from these clips that I've recorded, each instrument, I've got it what I want, and I want to make a song. Well, the next stage of that is grouping, to group them together. So let's say I really like row E. Okay, now I'd go to grouping, and I'd go to group one, and then I can click set, and now those have been turned into a group. Play that back. All right, now I'd go to grouping again, and maybe I want that to be group two. Set, group two. Group completed. Now before we move on, you should know if for any reason I want to change some of these clips, I can do edit and I can go to a piano roll, and there's the actual MIDI. So again, it, it looks like a DAW, and it's a pretty sizable screen. So you could go in here and actually hear individual notes. And I just added a note there, and I can undo, I can erase. So this is just, it really blows me away. This is really cool, this ability to get in and edit individual clips. But let's go back. So I've got that grouping set up. If I go to group here, I can see I've already got one and two set, and I can preview them. And it gives me a preview to see what I was launching, what row of clips I was launching. So I've got that set, I've got group set. Now I want to go to song. I can click make song, or I can go to sequencer, song. And now you can see here these little kind of arrows numbered to 32 is where I can place those groups that I just made. So if I click Make Song, I can click Add here. And look, now I've just added one to the one spot. That's the first group I made. I can add two. I can add two again. And if I had made many, many more groups, I could be adding them. And this is how I'm getting my song. I'm making an arrangement. So once I get all of those added, now I can look at my song and 
look at my arrangement this way. So again, we're backing further and further out. We were down to the clips, and now we're backing out to a full song. So if I play this back, So you could think about each of these sections in like a three or four minute song that would be, you know, a verse, a chorus, something like that. They're very short right now, but of course I can make them longer. If I go back, back up enough, now I'm back to my group list and I can change the length. And you can see here on the grid, again, just like it would be, kind of like a DAW style, as I'm changing the bar length. It actually al also reminds me of FL Studio a little bit, the way that works. Um, and I can go in and make these any length I want. I could make it 16 bars. I could say I want to make this group 8 bars. So now as I go back to my song mode and press play, <laughs> okay, so I started jamming a little bit, but again, that was like a good example of just kind of like an on-the-fly workflow. I was feeling something, I just selected a different sound, started playing along with it, and that's how it works, right? That's the workflow. That's what you are used to today when you're creating music. You just want to be able to go to something quick, pick a sound, record, uh, oh, I want to change my arrangement, go back and forth from a micro clip view and then go up to a full song. And that kind of workflow is how you want to be able to build a song. And now that you've seen all that, just to reiterate, it's very easy to share these songs that you're creating with other devices. So actually you can even go as far as having something from one of the other Phantom models be imported here and back. Of course you have to make sure you're using sounds that are actually onboarded onto both instruments so they'll load. But everything you're doing, like all these clips, the scenes, the way the song is already laid out, all of that will transfer back and forth. And again, if you want to put it onto a DAW and you want to transfer from working here to a computer, it's really easy. You can control the DAW itself from the keyboard. You can sync all your different channels with channels in your actual DAW in the mixer. Uh, it's just a really beautiful design that's made to work well with other technology. Backing out, again, going back to scene, getting to single tone. And now I want to show you a little bit more of the synth control area, which you can see sequencer is really just right here. And then you have synth control. Just a little overview, you have amp. If I click amp, you have all kinds of synth controls, oscillator type, um, PRM, pitch, pitch envelope filter, things you would be used to seeing in a synthesizer. Uh, you have different effects that you can add, distortion, tone. And then you have a complete LFO section, LFO, destination, LFO 1. And it just goes on and on. I mean, it's really great. Not that it's uncommon to see keyboards like this, digital pianos that have more extended synth controls and parameters, but it's just nice to know you have it. You know, you may be somebody that, you know, a lot of times just goes for presets and maybe you tweak it a little bit, but if you want to get really deep down, again, like the tone wheel organ, you can. You have all these different settings that you can go through. And also in this section, just to show you how visually appealing it is, for instance, this cutoff knob, which I love that it's just right there. It's like I don't have to go set something or wonder where it is. It's just cut off, boom, right there, which is, again, like a lot of synthesizers. So if I was going to hold down this note here and show you. Look at that really awesome graphic that comes up. We're actually seeing the sweep on the EQ as I'm changing the cutoff. And same thing, if I change the cutoff and then the resonance, you'll see that peak go up. Back over to the fader section here. Of course, as I showed you, you have the ability to select different zones and also enable them, layer them, 
create your own perfect, you know, spread over all the zones and map this keyboard how you want. And you have the faders underneath where you can change the levels. But then also above that, you can see you have things like attack, release, reverb, chorus, gain, and EQ on and off. And these knobs will be your way to control that. So this one's set for pan, left and right for, for the zones. But if I go to control, now I can change zone attack release, reverb, chorus, the gain. Now I can select all these different zones and be changing all those individual parameters. Another feature that's kind of like a pet PV soapbox kind of thing. There are so many great keyboards that do not have an accessible octave up and down. Sometimes you have to go search for it and it's totally not cool. Well, I love that what I love what they do on the Phantoms. It's literally right here. Octave shift. Easy. It's not something that I have to come all the way over here for, all the way to one side of the keyboard. It's here where it's more accessible. So if I need to do that quickly, it's right there. Back over here, if I go back to single tone view and go to synth, I can show you real quick on the screen. I've done a lot with the touch screen, but you'll see this bottom row I can change with the encoders and a lot of these are some of the things I was showing you that are already in amp and in the parameter control. So if I go back to synth, if I go to single tone view, go to my synth sound, maybe select a new sound here. Now I have easy control over stuff like the LFO rate. Amp depth for it. So I can be tweaking the sound and then, you know, go, oh, I want the arpeggio on as well. Still in the center here, if I go to chain, that's something that's kind of like your set list. And I just want to show it to you briefly. You have one out of 32 here, and I can actually go in and set individual scenes or sounds that are set up to be spread out however I want, different zones, different instruments, how I want to perform it, and I can have a set list. So again, I made the analogy to someone that does live shows or someone that does maybe a touring musical as a keyboard player. You have lots of different sounds, patch changes, you have to have a different program, we'll call it, for each song that has all these sounds built in. Chain is the way you can do that. It's the way you can have your sounds built in, designed, put in order for a show and ready to call up quickly. And you can actually use the pads to launch those different sounds as well, which I'll now go over to the pads because we haven't talked about those awesome pads yet. When you click pad, it is automatically set to be a sample pad. And under sample pad, You'll see here I have four banks of different samples. These are ones that are already built in. I actually played along with a couple of them in the beginning. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And yes, you can add your own samples in there. So. I mean, you could have a backing track there if there's something you want to play with. You've built maybe a backing track in another program or something, and you just want to have the audio file there ready to trigger. You could totally use it for that. But let's go back to pad. You also have notepad, which you can guess is playing actual notes from an instrument in the keyboard. And it's always set to be a default for a drum kit. which just makes good sense. But back to pad mode, you also have DAW control, so you can actually use the pads to control your DAW. There is a DAW control button over here that will snap you there, but you might want to do it with the pads, and that's available to you. Then there's zone mute, zone solo, that's pretty self-explanatory, and then a few other ones here. For instance, pattern, that is going to be related to your sequencer. So click pattern, if I want to see what's actually in that setting, shift, pad, and now you can see here, 
here's my patterns A through H, just like you saw from before when I was doing the sequencer. And this is actually a way that I could be launching those patterns and those clips with the pads. So like you would perform from a DAW that would have all of your clips and all of your MIDI stuff and your arrangement built in, you could be doing that with the pads here as well. There are a lot of sounds on this thing and I definitely can't go through them all, but I just want to quickly go through some of the categories so you see what you get. Of course, we started out with some acoustic piano. And there are multiple categories, pop piano, here's a uh, E grand. Honky tonk. Electric pianos. Different models, of course, you could never run out of sounds on this thing. Organ section. And pitch bend if you want it. Keys, so that's going to give you some harpsichords. Clav, of course. Oh, that's called pulse clav. Chorus clav. Guitar. Twelve string. And of course, not just acoustics. Here's some electric guitars. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not a real guitar, okay? I know. So don't say anything in the comments. Just another sound. Distortions, of course. Woohoo! Yeah, man, that pitch bend is nice. Basses, acoustic basses, electric basses, yeah, all these sounds are great. They all sound really nice. Some synth bass. String sounds. some ones with some effects on them already. Tape strings, and you would expect you get all kinds of different articulations, different you know groupings of strings. You have full orchestral strings, different sections. You also have solo strings. Very nice. Brass. Ooh, that's nice. Here is a different one. Oh, nice effect on that one. Trumpet section.
And just like with orchestra, you get different ensembles, different types, different colors. Uh, here's some brass playing with their mutes in. Yeah, really nice. Synth brass, of course, as well. There's a Juno brass sound. She'll be fully equipped for your 80s music gig. <laughs> uh, here's some solo brass. Moving on to wind, same thing, alto sax, tenor sax. Uh, you've also got sax section, of course. And of course, be thinking, when you're building an arrangement, you're building a song, you know, you can record your horn parts in the keyboard with these really nice sounds. There's a whole category for flute, wow. That sounds great. Some other wind. Wow, that's called French bags. It's very French. As a guy with a lot of French heritage, I, I'll say I think that sounds French. And you have to believe me, because I am French. Uh, bagpipes. I mean, you just, you got all kinds of stuff. Recorder. Whistle. Ocarina. King's Choir. Oh man, we're on a quest for something. Somebody is... Somebody's doing something epic there, but it's also a little bit scary sounding. Uh, here's some doos. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. So you get all of your jazz scat kind of stuff, which Roland is known for. They've always been good at that stuff. Do, 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 do. Jazz scat. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, you know this keyboard is great at that. Brassy lead, here we're now into synth. Ooh. Nice trail. Again, if I go to amp for the synth, I've got all these controls, LFO control, parameter, for all the different categories. If I would have been in a different one here, if I would have gone to brass, parameter, similar kind of thing. So you have that sound shaping available to you and whatever kind of sound you're in. And go back here, uh, pad sounds. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And again, I'm just running through these for you. There's a bell pad section. And then the last categories, FX. There's a bunch of categories in here, phrase. So these are kind of almost like samples that are built in. Yeah. Rolling through another category, pulsating. Oh my goodness. It's Jason Bourne.
Another category, beat and groove. Yep, that's exactly what I expected there. Hit, you gotta have some big hits, some impacts. Ooh, that one was nice. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally great. All that's built in, you don't even have to go build any of that stuff. That's so awesome. On to drums. Of course, you have some standard kits. I like having the, the kind of crush roll here. A little, little buzz roll, kind of. Like having that accessible. Tons of drums, though. Of course, electronic type drums, too. Going down here, some TR types. Of course, you probably have a classic 808 in here, but there's 707, there's CR78. Of course, you have a full range keyboard for all the different percussion sounds. And there's an actual percussion section, so you can have steel drums, things like that, or concert bass drum, timpani, and those last two sections, user and assign, is where you can go in and set your own sound, so you can make your own, you know, melodic type sound, or you can go in and set a drum or percussion, a drum kit sound, and map it, change it, do whatever you want, add effects to it, and save your own original sounds. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, click here for more videos like this one, and go to Sweetwater.com for all of your music instrument and pro audio needs.